Hello, my name is Holly Hughes, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for BAI. Joining me today is Joris Henson, founder and co-lead of the Deutsche Bank API program, and Dennis Gada, Head of Financial Services for North America at Infosys. Deutsche Bank recently won a 2021 BAI Global Innovation Award in the Digital Transformation category for their API program, Embedded Finance Initiative. As the lead for this program, Joris will take us through his innovation journey and what he learned along the way. And together with Dennis, we'll discuss creating a culture of innovation, the convergence of business units and technology areas within banks to drive digital transformation, and what's happening outside of banking and across the globe that leaders should be paying attention to. So Joris and Dennis, it's so great to be with you virtually today. We're from three different um, areas here, Chicago, Atlanta, and Germany. So great to all be connected and have this conversation. And Joris, I thought I would start with you. If you could just describe what the Embedded Finance um, Initiative is, um, the problem that it's solving, and how you brought it to market. All right. Um, so maybe let me start with um, how we started as an API program. So we started back in 2015 with the idea to open up to allow partners to build new products for their and our customers, including banking data. Um, there was a regulation back then uh, in, in, in Europe called PSD2, and we wanted to kind of take this as an opportunity to go beyond the scope of what regulation required us to do. And uh, in the first step, we started to offer um, account data, personal data, and with embedded finance, we now took it to the next level um, um, because with the help of APIs, we are now able to integrate uh, banking products into third-party platforms, into banking products, products like, um, uh, for instance, to open an account, uh, everything basically uh, in, in the future. And, and this, the, the nice thing is that it, it really meets um, the, 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 the consumer at the point of need. The consumer doesn't need to switch to another website to uh, subscribe or, or open a banking product, right? So they, we, we, we um, include banking products right where the customer needs it uh, uh, in different situations. And that's... That's the nice thing about embedded finance and uh, the opportunities uh, are really unlimited, I think, if you think of different industries and everything that could be included. Yeah, for sure. Such an important part of the, the customer journey and that customer experience. So it's exciting to see how APIs are really, you know, evolving and transforming and the great work that, that you and your team did. Um, and, you know, yours, you're certainly an experienced innovator. I'm sure you've learned a lot of valuable lessons um, throughout your career. You know, what were some of the leadership lessons that you learned during this most mm. recent innovation journey? Uh, it's, it's quite an interesting uh, question when I thought about it. It, it took me back to a few years uh, uh, earlier in my in my career when I joined an innovation team and uh, I came from technology it was the first time I got involved with all those uh, innovation methodologies like design thinking and I read one book it's uh, from Gifford Pinchard about entrepreneurship and I'm not sure if you're familiar with it it's a, it's a very old book and this book has got this 10 commandments of entrepreneuring which then later on got extended but uh, one is uh, to stay under the radar uh, as long as possible because any kind of publicity uh, will trigger, he calls it the corporate immune system. And one of the leadership lessons I've learned is that we, uh, we were under the radar, we started to build the API program, uh, and then uh, we involved the organization when we had a prototype. So I would say this is, this is one um, one. Um, yeah, lessons learned I have from this journey. Um, and apart from this, I would say it's it's about uh, involving people. Um, um, so, for instance, in our case, uh, we we launched the program with an external hackathon. But before we did that, we had an internal hackathon to prove the concept, to to verify this idea of working with an API. And um, I'm, I'm just for still wearing this old uh, hoodie from the hackathon back then. But for the very first time. Um, we had this, we created this um, um, atmosphere, I would say, of people who wanted to attend, wanted to find out more about the hackathon, about the data we offer, who uh, yeah, wanted to, 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 to join this event. And I think that's, that's another lesson, right? To, 
to involve the people, to build a network of people, of other innovators to, to actually pursue the next step. And, um, well, I have so many, uh, but that may be the last one I would like to add is um, the recent one about product market fit. So if you, if you think of banking data, we thought like, well, you could see a lot of use cases where that would make sense, but actually to find the first case, to find uh, a partner, to, to understand the context and to solve a problem on one hand, but on the other hand, also create a meaningful business model. This is quite a challenge. And uh, I would say it requires to be patient on one hand, but to talk to lots of partners and expect it to really change everything you saw in the beginning. That's maybe the last lesson. Yeah, really great points. And Dennis, I know you work with a lot of clients to help them drive innovation uh, within their organizations. What other leadership lessons have you experienced um, with your clients and yourself? Sure, Holly. Uh, and first of all, you know, thanks to Joris and the team at uh, Deutsche Bank for winning the uh, BAI Global Innovation Awards. I think it's a very inspirational story for, you know, all organizations uh, to follow. And, you know, as I was listening to him and, you know, thinking through some of the innovation uh, lessons that we've seen in, you know, various other uh, client organizations as well, uh, there are a few things that really stand out, right? I think one is the whole thing around, you know, democratizing innovation, it's not just about a small team in, you know, one part of the organization that focuses on innovation, but everyone has the opportunity and the access uh, to innovate. Uh, and many of the innovations actually come at the grassroots levels of people who are, you know, really uh, close to the business. And I think that's been a huge uh, success story in, in many organizations. I think the second thing, and, you know, you always also uh, talked about it, really doing innovation with the lens of the customer, right? Uh, what are the unmet needs? What are the new needs of you know, the ever-changing customer landscape? And I think that's where the real differentiation comes. It is not about uh, you know, innovating just what the existing business is and what you can do differently, but really looking at it uh, mm. from uh, the lens of uh, the, the end customer. Uh, and then, you know, really being... Uh, uh, comfortable with you know experimentation and ambiguity i'm sure you went with a lot of that uh, as well because you know financial services uh, especially is a very regulated industry there are a lot of risk and controls which are absolutely important uh, but how do you you know still encourage uh, you know this kind of creativity and experimentation to really uh, you know drive uh, the best uh, ideas forward and finally you know i feel really having a very uh, agile approach, right? Nobody has all the answers. You need to, uh, you know, go along. Uh, gone are the days where you do, you know, very large multi-year programs and wait till the end to get the outcomes. But as you are on the journey, how do you start delivering certain outcomes? Some may be successful, some may be not, but really learn uh, in the process and move forward. I think these are some, you know, key things that uh, I have seen, uh, you know, work quite well uh, in various organizations, but innovation is certainly, you know, beyond just a buzzword anymore. Mm. Yeah, really great points, Dennis. I think, you know, both of you, you know, brought up some great themes, um, you, know, you know, there. And I think, you know, yours certainly, it's not all smooth sailing, you know, when you're, when you're going on this journey. And I think, you know, those listening, um, you know, one of the challenges is being able to overcome obstacles that you face. Um, yours, could you talk about, you know, obstacles, you know, that you may have seen, um, you know, throughout either this project or others and how you and your team overcame them during the process? Mm. Yeah, I think it's, it, it relates to what you just said, Dennis, that it's, it, it's about turning into innovation into a product. So I'm not sure if you've seen those design thinking uh, projects that lead to prototypes that never get implemented because it's so difficult, they are far away from reality or a way to in implement it. So I think the biggest challenge in the beginning was, okay, you have this huge infrastructure of a bank. So how do you actually make uh, a product happen? And this is, I guess, the nice thing about technical interfaces, APIs, because they allow us to be, be faster and to actually uh, build this understanding in the organization uh, why they are why they matter and to have a broader range of APIs you can choose from I think that's for sure was a challenge in the beginning. The other challenge is about um, uh, this cultural change that comes with it because um, in the past we were used to um, projects we deliver once and then they are done. We build a product but we build it ourselves. 
and um, opening up and embedded finance, this whole concept is based on the idea of partnerships. So you no longer do everything yourself, but you have to accept that there are experts out there who are very innovative, are very successful in their niche. And to build this understanding within the organization, that took time. And in our case, it helped, again, to involve the people. Um, to give you an example, um, one thing we learned that is pretty important for partners is the speed of onboarding. Right, so they don't want to take it six months or nine months to enter into a partnership. And uh, in order to design a quick onboarding process, we had to involve the different parties from legal, compliance, data protection, uh, and we we took them to our meetings with the startups to understand why does this matter that opening up is actually an opportunity and it's a great possibility. And through those personal connections and that they learned on the ground what we are doing, they kind of were more and more supportive. So um, we managed to design a two-week onboarding process. But on top of this, if you talk to people now as compared to maybe four years or five years back, uh, it's it's completely different, right? They understand the concept of APIs. They are they even send you emails. Hey, this would be a great idea. So you see how this uh, this change maybe takes time, but at the end of the day, is uh, a successful way for innovation within the company. Definitely, you know, you bring up a great point about culture, and at BAI we look at that a lot, and we look at this, you know, creating a culture of innovation, and what are some of those mm -hmm. key elements. And, you know, certainly we've talked with a lot of our executive roundtable members about just some of the challenges around talent, um, especially right now in the market. Um, so, Dennis, you know, maybe I could take, you know, point this one to you. Um, you know, what's most important for leaders, you know, when they're thinking about this culture of innovation and how they can build, retain and develop the right talent? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, especially in today's environment, uh, uh, talent is such a, a hot topic and, you know, everybody talks about the great resignation and so on. But if you really, you know, I've looked at multiple surveys and if you really look at the uh, feedback from uh, from the people, uh, you know, if they're leaving an organization, it's not just because of, you know, compensation and other benefits, but it is also a lot because of the opportunities to work on, you know, innovation and interesting uh, uh, types of things that they would like to do, right? So uh, I think uh, uh, from, you know, even uh, attracting and retaining uh, talent, which is extremely uh, important uh, in, in today's environment, uh, you know, really having a, a culture of innovation and really making it real is extremely uh, important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from that perspective, I strongly believe that organizations which really, you know, from the CEO to the developer, right, and everybody else, like really talk about innovation uh, in the same breath, right, uh, they all believe in it. It's not just a PowerPoint slide, but something completely uh, ingrained into the organization really helps to, uh, uh, you know, build that uh, uh, strong narrative and the culture within the organization. One of the uh, things we have seen uh, uh, with many uh, firms enable this is to uh, focus on, you know, continuous uh, learning and reskilling. Uh, again, in today's environment, you know, technology and business both are changing uh, so rapidly. And, uh, you know, it's the skills which are relevant today or relevant yesterday may not be uh, of that much of uh, importance in the future. So really having that constant mechanism of reskilling the existing workforce uh, and uh, even the people that are being hired from the market, really getting them, giving them the opportunities to be trained and reskilled makes a huge impact, right? At Infosys, for example, you know, we are a 270,000 people company. And uh, for us, one of the most important aspects of our talent management is around uh, training and reskilling. And uh, we attempt that, you know, everybody, you know, in a two-year period, the entire workforce should get, should get reskilled and should have at least two or three new skills that they're working on. So I really feel, you know, the combination of, uh, you know, reskilling and training, as well as a full, uh, you know, management uh, executive support towards the innovation as a strategy to drive the growth of the business really builds, uh, uh, you know, a strong uh, culture for innovation. 
Yeah, some really great points. And I, you know, there's been so much around this great resignation and, you know, a lot of media headlines there and a lot of it's being pointed towards flexibility and things, which certainly matter. Mm -hmm. But I love what you said about just that meaning of the work and and people want to feel attached to something that is truly driving change and making a difference. So it's great to see that that spirit within Infosys. And, you know, you, are, so you talked about culture, you know, um, a lot. Any, anything else you would add on that, on that talent side that, that, you, that you're doing or the organization is doing? Yeah, I, th- I think it's, what I think is really important, I would like to uh, uh, underline is the, is there, that people work on something meaningful, have the possibility to work on innovative stuff themselves. And what I find, important is to no longer think in the separation of what technology is or what business typically is. So I think it's about um, having mixed teams, having people, uh, well, self-sufficient teams who can really develop a product themselves. So I think this is where people get a lot of motivation out uh, of the challenge they face, as well as that suddenly they have to deal maybe with a real customer out there. Uh, and it's no longer someone uh, in sitting in product management who um, takes care of the sales process, but the developers may be uh, there in the discussion to answer the technical questions. And I think this is really uh, a different way of engaging people and also um, have, have a good feeling of the importance of the work they do. And I think that's, that also adds to the culture and, um, and the future talents that we want to retain and attract. I completely agree with yours on that, right? I think, uh, you know, wherever we've also seen like organizations where people talk about the impact that they are making on the, you know, uh, on their customers or on the larger uh, economy and so on. I think those employees are much more motivated to work harder Mm -hmm. and to stay with the organization. So just wanted to add one point. Yeah, definitely a great point. And, you know, building off of that culture theme, we're definitely seeing a convergence of business units and technology areas within the banks to drive digital transformation and impact. And Dennis, you know, may I'll point this one to you. You know, why do you feel that convergence and that collaboration is so important? Yeah, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, like a lot of the focus on innovation and transformation is around, uh, you know, customer outcomes and business outcomes. And you cannot really deliver successfully on that unless, you know, uh, technology, business, risk, all the other teams really come together, right? Uh, Secondly, you know, as organizations work in more and more of an agile approach, again, you need better communication, coordination between the different teams. And I think, uh, you know, you always made some great points on, you know, how, uh, you know, for, for the program that they won the award, it was not just a technology project, but something which was really focused around, business outcomes and and making life better for their customers and then naturally uh, all parts of the organizations come together you know here in the us uh, the number of uh, banking ceos that have announced that you know they are actually technology companies is uh, is quite a lot in the last uh, few months and that really also gives you uh, a sense of you know uh, from an organizational perspective uh, again technology and uh, uh, business is coming together in fact so many executives who are appointed now on the business side are people uh, from a technology background which you know really helps them uh, you know kind of implement some of the ideas that they were always uh, passionate about in technology and make a real impact on the business so i think this is a great uh, uh, trend it needs to converge uh, more and more and you know it will eventually be a great outcome for the growth of the business and for the customers and, you know, you, yours, you did talk earlier about, you know, you do come from a technology background. Um, building off of what Dennis said, how do you feel like that's helped you as an innovator within your organization? Uh, I think it helped me in the way that I, I feel like technology nowadays is part of everything, every product. And it's, it's, it's the enabler of a product. And if you add this business way of thinking, this, for instance, what I learned during my innovation time, it's a really powerful combination. And to be able to talk to developers on one hand, and on the other hand, transfer this uh, to a discussion with a potential partner. I think that really uh, is a good combination. And um, for instance, we introduced the role for uh, building APIs and we design it in a way that they, uh, the product managers responsible for an API product are responsible for the full life cycle from discovery to um, actually uh, assigning the contract with a, with a, with a uh, partner. And 
it it's really it's still not easy to find the people who manage to to do this role. And I think, uh, Dennis, you talked about um, trainings, and I think this is really important to invest in uh, uh, and to um, allow people to think broadly. Uh, I think that's that's really a success factor to make to make it happen. Yeah, and going back to your question. I think there are a lot of smart people in technology uh, uh, who can do this role. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's the way forward, basically. Yeah, for sure. I think and, and just thinking differently about that and, and going back to just how it's set up and the structure and, you know, talent just being so central to all of this, um, you know, is definitely something that we're hearing, I would say, more broadly within BAI. So one more question to both of you, just to, to wrap up here today. Let's talk about what's happening outside of banking and outside of the U.S. A lot of our BAI audience, BAI audience is here in the U.S., um, but we know that there's so much happening in other sectors and other parts of the globe. Um, would love to know, yours, I'll start with you and then go to Dennis, you know, what do you think are, are some interesting things happening um, that could inspire innovation here in North America? Um. The interesting development I see is that different industries start to uh, open up um, in the same way we as a bank, uh, in the banking industry uh, does. Um, they have API programs, developer portals. They start to think about what uh, they can do with their data in di included in different products. So uh, I think it will still take a little bit of time to build up the, the uh, technology infrastructure to do so. but. I think uh, for the future, I would say we will see more products that uh, combines data from different industries and consumers will no longer have the feeling that, well, I have to switch to that or this, but they will be served in the context they are in, in their life situation. And I guess uh, this is the trend um, to look into. And uh, perhaps you have a similar development uh, over there in the U.S. Yeah, and Dennis, what would you add there? What are you seeing? Yeah, see, I think, you know, uh, I've been lucky to have worked in different parts of the world, in Asia, in, in Europe, and now in the U.S. for the last several years. And I really feel that, you know, a lot of the innovation in banking is actually uh, happening in Asia, right? Just to talk about some specifics uh, uh, with respect to, you know, payments and digital payments in, in India. India is now ranked number one in the world uh, in digital payments and almost 70% uh, of the payments are happening digitally enabled by a lot of uh, open api based technology that you always talked about which has been you know the infrastructure market infrastructure has been put in place by the government and then by used by uh, all the banks and uh, several uh, fintechs that have uh, uh, come there right uh, and i really think that you know the um, kind of opportunity for growth of uh, whether it's a payments business or digital banking, there are some uh, you know amazing uh, examples from India and China that other parts of the uh, world can uh, also learn from. Uh, a full digital stack, whether it's you know around ensuring uh, you know paperless onboarding, digital or cashless uh, payments, a kind of a digital consent layer, and so on. Uh, I think these technologies have matured significantly uh, in Asia. I think. Uh, from an industry perspective, I feel, uh, you know, one industry that, again, everybody can learn from now is actually the uh, auto industry, right? And uh, the favorite example of a car that I drive as well is uh, Tesla, uh, which is really uh, not a car. It's a software which can also take you from uh, point A to point B. Uh, and the way, uh, you know, Tesla has uh, disrupted the auto industry by really uh, focusing on the customer, the experience, and bringing the best technology uh, in auto. Uh, I think uh, we have to wait and see, uh, you know, who will be the uh, Tesla of the uh, banking industry. But I think that's a very, uh, you know, inspiring story as well. Yeah, I think it's just some great examples. I think a great place for us to, to end this conversation, but certainly the conversation will continue. Um, Dennis, yours, thank you so much for joining me today, you know, sharing your insights. And yours, congratulations again to you and your team on winning the BAI Global Innovation Award for that digital transformation category. And I know you'll continue to do great things, especially in that area of APIs. I mean, it really is 
interesting to see, you know, with the with the customer at the core of how to create this better experience. Um, so again, kudos and congrats to all of you. And thanks to all of you who have tuned in today. You can learn more about the 2021 BAI Global Innovation Award winners and finalists at BAI.org and also find other thought leadership that can help you lead innovation efforts within your own organizations. So thanks again and have a great day.